Hello, my name's Simon Crafer. We're at Termas Rio Hondo in the With You RNF garage next to the legend of his bike and uh, the up and coming superstar Darren Binder next door. And today's tech talk is about the air fuel mixture in modern race bikes. Have you got a little guest? What's hey, happening, Simon? Good, mate. Good, good. Are and you giving a little tech talk, yeah? Yep. Yep, that's my job, mate, it's to uh, explain a few technical things each week. And uh, I was running around with a temperature gun. You know, I'll track temperature gun. And? and track nothing. temperatures, okay? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck this nice. weekend, buddy. Um, so the tech talk is about the air fuel mixture and the importance of it. Uh, so a rich mixture means for the quantity of air you have, you have too much fuel and the too much fuel doesn't burn as well. It burns colder and not as well. Then as it gets leaner, it gets to the optimum mixture. It produces the most amount of power. And then as it gets leaner, it, uh, meaning less fuel uh, mixed in the air, it, it, get, it also burns hotter, it produces a bit less power as well. So. In the early days it was carburetors, you know, when uh, early days of racing and the first part of the throttle was uh, the pilot jet air screw, then the next part of the throttle all through the middle was the needle pulling out, coming out of the hole and then the last part was the main jet, which you might have heard the saying on the main jet, meaning wide open and we didn't have any electronic aids to help find the right carburetion. So you had to do things called a plug chop. So you'd be right, checkered flag at the end, last straight, then shut the throttle and turn it off. And then the mechanic would help you get back, maybe with a scooter, push you back to the garage so the mechanic could take out the spark plugs and read the plug chop. And, and basically it's seeing the engine, how it's running at full pace. The darker colored spark plug showed that it had too much fuel in the air mixture. A, so rich and the lighter color it is the leaner it was you know the less fuel and they tried to get it right lean well rich meant uh, like I said cooler and less power lean would start to a certain point would be dangerous you know because the oil was mixed in the fuel not enough fuel in there not enough oil too much temperature and the engine could seize you know and flick you off so super important to get it right then Lambda sensors came along, so which is a, basically a temperature gauge in the exhaust pipe that could tell you uh, what the engine temperature was. And the, the computer guy, when they first turned up, could help you find the right carburetion. So if I complained that it had a flat spot somewhere, they could say, ah, it's a little bit cold, a little bit hot, and know which way to go. Carburetion, big help, and no more plug chops needed. Then um, we, the advent of air boxes came, you know, so tubes coming into a sealed air box and with speed the air was forced into the engine. So increasing the amount of air getting rammed in there, which is a positive thing. And uh, then you could raise the fuel that was going in there. More air and fuel means more power. And then, so other things I learned was we would go to different tracks that had different altitudes. So, uh, like, just like humans, say at Everest, there's no air and uh, hard to perform, you know. So, and the lower, if you get down to sea level or even lower, the maximum air volume. And so then you could put more uh, fuel in there and produce more power. At the high altitudes, less air, so you could put less fuel in it, produce less power. We also learned because there was less fuel in air, you could run a higher compression, so less volume, so you could compress it more and get a little advantage, you know, right, run a higher compression than you could at sea level. So, um, then coming to the modern era, which is uh, what you'll be looking forward to, fuel injection. And uh, so, the engineers I've spoken to have said we've got 22 litres of fuel only at every race, you know. We run a fuel tank that is, uh, this particular engineer said 21.95, 
so there is no chance of getting busted for having too much fuel. And then we, our, our aim, he said, is to burn all of that fuel in the race, you know, and arrive to Parc Ferme without stopping but with no fuel. So you've used all the energy uh, that you were given for that race. So then he said that we've got uh, most of the bikes in the paddock here have a, an injector up high, or four injectors up high, above, say, the, the, the intake bell mouth or trumpet, whatever you want to call it, the intake into the, into the engine. Up high, there's four injectors, and down low, there's four injectors, and the ones up high are for more wide open work, you know, flat out, full throttle, and the lower ones give a better throttle connection and uh, a better for constant throttle, a smoother, you know, linear throttle. And he's saying things like, so they work on, um, with the air box, ramming that air in, super important, not with the high up uh, injector, not to waste it, meaning the turbulence in there coming in from the air, it's atomizing the fuel, the better it atomizes, uh, meaning they run 10 bar fuel pump to atomize that fuel really good because you don't want big droplets in because they don't burn as well. So the problem is the air coming from the air box can blow that away, blow it onto the side of the air box. He said, imagine having a glass air box. They probably have. You'll see it wash on the side and waste that fuel, you know? So they really work hard on that. Then uh, I was gonna say uh, the 10 bar fuel pumps have to be gear driven, just like I explained in the fuel tech talk. Gear driven fuel pump, they need to raise it to 10 bar to get that fuel atomizing from the injector really good. But the problem was the, with the uh, gear driven fuel pumps, they can cavitate easily, meaning if they pick up air, uh, the bottom of the fuel tank, the fuel pressure drops a lot. So some of them run <coughs> a more conventional pump to get the uh, fuel fed to the uh, gear driven pump. Some don't, they can uh, find a way to do it. But he says when they do get a bit of air in there, they've got the ECU designed to calculate that the fuel pump pressure has dropped to say three bar, and the ECU will calculate, give the engine more fuel to cover up so the rider doesn't feel it, you know? He said it's only when it gets really bad now that they'll have a big uh, hesitation or a drop in power. So next thing I gotta tell you about, I've got a little list here is, um, the advanced retard of the ignition, he said what they can do is use the ignition timing to suit the uh, fuel air pressure coming in. So they've got a, uh, something to measure the fuel air pressure getting forced into the engine from the air box and, and they can adjust the ignition to suit that, you know, so we're super, getting super technical. Then um, the temperature of the air as well as fuel is super important because these most of them v4s or inline that i'm sitting next to now is giving off so much heat that the fuel gets close to boiling like i mentioned in the fuel tech talk and if it gets close to boiling then the fuel pump cavitates you know then the air that's coming in they said they have a lot of carbon fiber protections and stuff to keep the air box uh, and the air coming in cool as possible because the hotter the air, just like uh, uh, altitude, the hotter the air, the less dense it is, less oxygen, so not as good. The last thing you want to do is raise the temperature of the air getting fed in. So because some of you will notice that your engines, bikes or cars run best at sea level at night, on a cool night, you get more power. Same here, so you want to keep that air coming in cool as possible. Uh, Advanced uh, cool. So uh, yeah, ECU. During the race, the ECU not only calculates to cover up from a drop in fuel pump pressure, but it calculates how much fuel you've got on board and how much you're using, how many laps you've got, and it can tell the rider you need to change to a different map. So in a race that uh, say for example Qatar or Austria that uses a lot of fuel over race distance because a lot of time spent flat out um, then in the beginning of the race they'll run the more powerful fuel map use more to get the start 
to fight with a few riders and get into a position. Then, after some laps, the fuel, uh, the ECU will tell the rider, you're not going to make it to the end of the race on this fuel pump, a uh, fuel map. So, pumps up, uh, pops up with a warning, and the rider can change to a more lean fuel map, lose a bit of power, but manage to try and keep the lap time going, but he doesn't have to fight as much. And then towards the end of the race, because he's saved that fuel, he can turn back up to a more powerful, a more a richer fuel map, use more power and fight at the end of the race. The last thing I wanted to tell you about is the fuel that is coming in in 2024. It has 40% of uh, non-fossil fuel components. And I thought this would slow the bikes down. Maybe the detonation uh, point was lower, something that would slow the bikes down. But from what I've heard, uh, some of the manufacturers putting two, 250cc, so one cylinder out of a MotoGP bike, say, uh, engines on the dyno, they only lost one horsepower. And uh, with some fueling changes, maybe combustion chamber changes, um, they've only lost one horsepower and they believe by the time 2024 comes when they have to use this fuel it'll be as powerful as the current uh, full fossil fuel that they're running. Um, it's not going to slow them down, they're still going to be 300 almost horsepower. So the next thing I'm waiting to see is there's talk of 2027 going to a much higher percentage of non-fossil fuel component um, in the fuel that MotoGP has to run and will that slow them down? We're yet to see. See you in Austin for the next Tech Talk. Bye for now.